Now, with just two weeks to go until Wimbledon, British number one Cameron Norrie has spoken of his increased expectations around his performances, which helped to motivate him. Speaking to Sky Sports News ahead of this week's Queen's Club Championships, Norrie told us about his plans for the grass court season, plus his hopes for this summer's transfer window as a Newcastle fan. Cam, great to see you. Welcome home. Welcome back to the UK. Um, what is it like to be a British player back on the grass, back playing in front of home crowds? Yeah, I think it, it feels good just to be back off the clay and hitting balls on the grass. And yeah, when the weather's like this, it's unbelievable. I think uh, best place in the world. So it's, it's nice to be back and obviously getting uh, a lot of time in the gym, a lot of time on the court and really looking forward to Queen's next week. You mentioned coming off the clay court season and Roland Garros is always a bit of a period of, of adaptation. How well do you feel your game is suited to the grass and how is that improving year by year? Yeah, I think it's always taken me a little bit more time to, to get used to um, the grass, obviously, over the years. And I think my results have improved year by year and great grass season last year and a great result here at Wimbledon last year. And I think I'm a tricky player on the grass, you know, uh, being lefty and, and my backhand staying very low and I'm really competing hard and, and making a lot of returns and, and using my, my lefty serve as much as I can. And, and I think on the grass is just how much you're really embracing it and, and, and how much you're, you're really putting pressure on the other guy because uh, typically it's not a surface where you're going to break serve too often. So um, I'm really trying to, to invest a lot in, in, in my return games and really trying to put a lot of pressure on, um, on my opponent that way, like kind of like Andy Murray does. What's changed for you? since your run to the semi-finals here last year? I don't think, I don't think a lot has changed for me. Oh, no. OK. No, I think I'm still trying to take care of, of everything, trying to be the best tennis player that I can be. And, and uh, I've still got the same team around me. And I and, uh, think it just made me a little bit more hungry, you know, and, and I really want to, to feel that and, and make another deep run in the slam and, and made me want it even more. Hmm. The stats show that you are third in the ATP's under pressure rating. Uh, over the last 52 weeks, across all surfaces, behind Novak Djokovic and Nick Kyrgios. And just remind me who that Wimbledon final was here last year. Yeah. How come? What do you put that down to? I think it's, uh, yeah, I didn't actually know that. And yeah, it's obviously exactly where you, where you want to be. But I think I'm always trying to play the bigger points as, as well as I can. I don't really know how they, they do this under pressure rating, but yeah, I'll, I'll take being, being <laughs> I'll take it. I'll take being third, but I think that's a sign where obviously you're trying to play your best tennis in the bigger moments, mm. and with our sport and the way the scoring system is, I think that's always what it comes down to. I think there's lots of metrics there to do with you know break points and tie breaks and pressure situations in tennis, but I don't think it necessarily takes into account playing at a tournament like this when you are the British men's number one, you know, at the most prestigious Grand Slam. Is this perhaps the first year where the expectation now is set substantially higher than maybe in previous years? Yeah, I think that's it's exactly where you want to be, you know, having having these expectations and and if someone's saying, Oh, you you wanna make semifinals again and, and do that, I think that's exactly what you want people to be saying. You don't wanna be like, Oh, you, you you're gonna go bomb out first round again, like uh, so I'll definitely take being on that side of things and and you know you have to embrace it there's no there's no shying away from it you know everyone's going to be watching you everyone's going to be um expecting big things and i think uh, in the next couple of weeks it's time to enjoy and always with that expectation scrutiny um you know people interested in you as a player but you as a person as well how, how do you cope with that yeah i'm doing <laughs> doing my best and doing what i can and and uh yeah i'm i'm, I'm not really focusing on the other side of that too much you know i'm trying to just to take care of my stuff as best as i can and and uh yeah you, you're gonna have a lot of people around this time interested in tennis so which is great but uh yeah I'm, i know what to expect do you have a zen place you go to cam or how do you switch off you know because you're gonna need to decompress from match to match you know uh, over the course of the grass court season yeah i think i probably have to to decompress a little bit more than <laughs> than what i'm doing i like obviously like to uh, I'm a pretty busy guy, so I'm really trying to, to rest a bit more, you know, so I'm, I'm going to have to do that for sure. Maybe go, go for a walk to the river, have, have a coffee somewhere, chill, and, and really just uh, try rest as much as I can, obviously, with a bit busy schedule um, in the next couple of weeks coming with a lot of um, emotions coming. And your folks are living here now as well, 
and almost as importantly, your dogs are here as well. I mean, that's part of it, isn't it? Yeah, that's part of the, you know, just decompressing and taking time out. Yeah, I think it's, it's obviously great for me to, to have them around and a little bit closer to me now, which is, which is great. And yeah, I haven't seen my, my dogs in a while, so it's been nice to not last week or so, obviously being off um, for a few days after French Open, I got to, to sit down with, with them and for the last kind of, uh, but in my life, I really haven't really had so much time to, to do that, so it's, it's going to be a little bit easier now. Uh, I'm guessing you're not a kind of chihuahua or sort of dachshund, you know, in a handbag kind of guy. I'm no. sensing you're a more of a big dog kind of guy, you're am right, I right? You're right, you're right. What have you got? Um, it's a golden retriever mixed with a black lab. Uh, Lovely. And it looks like basically like a black lab. Uh, <laughs> her name's Lulu, and then it's another black lab mixed with something else that I'm, I'm not sure, but right. it's, it's basically another big black dog. Okay. Um, and yeah. what's, what's their name? Uh, Piggy. So it's Lulu and Piggy. Piggy and Lulu. Two yeah. of the most interesting spectators for Wimbledon 2023. Yeah. Um, and along with being a tennis player and a dog lover, you're a big Newcastle fan, aren't you, Cam? Uh, how much did last season exceed expectations? Hugely. I, I couldn't believe it. And, so it's cool to have them in the, the Champions League next year. And yeah, it's going to be interesting what they do this summer. Uh, what do you think? Busy summer, some sort of blockbuster signing or just kind of quietly going about your business? Be what, would you, what would you like to it'll see? It would be nice to see a couple of blockbuster signings. But uh, <laughs> I think the coach Eddie Howe is doing a great job, you know, signing decent players and staying a little bit under the radar. And yeah, they're just slowly chipping away and he's built a really good culture there. So it's nice to see them in, enjoying it and, and doing what they did this last season. Incredible. Got to get you to a game at St. I mean, can you imagine? Big name in the Champions League, a Real Madrid, a Bayern Munich, something like that. You'd be up for that under the lights at St. James's, wouldn't you? For sure. I just. The schedule's never worked out, <laughs> so I keep them always in the wrong place. But uh, they've invited me a few times, but this end of this year, I'm going to have to go. And okay. I think, uh, yeah, oh, I'm definitely going to make that a, a goal to, to go and see them. Back to the tennis. What would success look like for you over the next three to four weeks? Yeah, it's a, it's a good question, I think. To win, win wouldn't be, would be perfect, but uh, I think you have to kind of take it step by step and, and really focus on focusing on Queens first and, and trying to, to bring my best level there. And I don't want don't to be, be playing my best at Queens. I want to be playing my best for, for the Grand Slam. So I think playing my best and giving myself the best chance at Wimbledon would, would, be, uh, would be ideal. And I think, yeah, it's a long, long way to go to, to win it. But uh, I'm going to try to give myself the best chance. And if I had to give you a choice, and Cam, you can only pick one, between you being in a Wimbledon final this year, or Newcastle being in a Champions League final at Wembley next year, which would you pick? Ah, uh, the easy one. I'm going to take Wimbledon final <laughs> every way, unfortunately. Yeah. For them. Newcastle, Newcastle have got time. They can reach Champions League finals in years to come yeah, anyway. Yeah, 100%. Fantastic. Cam, Perfect. go well on the grass. We really wish you all the best. Thank you for speaking to Great. us. Cheers. Appreciate that.